morning, everybody. I hope everybody is well. My name is Jason Meyer, and welcome to Morning Jump Start Feedback for Students. So we have a little different setup this morning. Uh, we've had some actual live physical paintings dropped off at the studio. So I'm going to take uh, the Morning Jump Start and continue our color lesson. We're working on color studies right now. And uh, I'm going to work on the students' work, and we're going to mix and talk about colors and talk about what we're doing today. Uh, I have two of them. Um, I might get to both, but I might not. I'm going to kind of take my time today and uh, make sure rather than giving you information, I feel like we've covered a lot of the information, I want to show you how to do it what I'm looking for and what it looks like and my process of doing it. Um, I think sometimes, I know for me and in my experience, most all students um, think they should be able to do something quicker than they can. Or just like the backgrounds in painting sometimes, they think, oh, man, I've been on this for 15 minutes. Man, sometimes I spend three or four hours in that background. So. But until you see that, until you know it, in three, what are you doing for three or four hours? It's those soft, gradual transitions and, and this and that. So let's have a look today and uh, see what kind of fun we can get into. So how's that? I've got the painting here and it's sideways. Um, it doesn't matter what direction you paint on the painting. It, it's always, you're always looking for the balance and I think sometimes when the painting's dis disoriented, for some reason this camera keeps changing on me. Here we go. We all feel better about that? I know I do. Let's see there. You see all the paint. All right, sorry about that. A little setup there. So as we look at this, kind of zoom in on here if we can. There we go. So as we look at this painting, what do you see? When you squint down, what jumps out? Well, actually the lightest thing right now is the background. Can you see that when you, you squint your eyes? This has color, but this value is actually darker than that right there. So the main thing I'm gonna be working on today is getting this set up. And what I mean by that is making it have the impact that it wants to have. And then from there, we're gonna walk off, okay? Now, with that being said, when I do want something to be most, oftentimes I want to look and see what I can take out. I feel like I could take out a lot of this. And when I say take out, um, I'm really talking about the brush work. Okay. Um, this looks really nice, it's nice and open, but those same brush marks are from here to here. And I'd rather this activity be used as another step. So if I can go from absolute nothing to just a little bit of this movement, boom, right? So what happens is if you have something too large, it kind of, takes on its own thing rather than being part of a movement. I hope that makes sense. And again, this is a process. This doesn't always happen. This was one go after yesterday's demo. And so um, it takes some time. But again, this is about what's next. Where do we go from here? So before I get too verbal, why don't we just start right here and uh, see if we can make some adjustments so that we're happy. All right, let's see, who's here this morning? We got Janny, good Tuesday morning, fellows artists in training. 
Oh, you guys are, aren't training artists. You are artists. We're developing, developing artists. Susan, welcome, welcome. Miss Shakti's here. Looks like Wendy made it. And somebody's got to keep this show running. Thank God for Cindy. Thank God for Cindy. All right, so we're going to zoom out a little bit so that we can see the whole palette. Tom, Tom made it. Good morning, Tom. Just like the old days. Almost. Just like the old days. Except I smell better. So um, we have ivory black here, cobalt blue, titanium white. These are my cools, neutral, cool. We have raw umber, permanent green light. This is a gamblin. Um, this artist, we were gonna, uh, Shakti was gonna leave her, uh, I think it's a Windsor Newton permanent green light. What ends up being a bit cooler than this, um, and it just kind of got lost in the mix. Um, but we're gonna save that. So this color will be slightly different, but you can adjust each of those so that they work. Yellow ochre, cadmium orange, cadmium red light, raw umber. So if we were looking on a color wheel, we have our cadmium red light, we're gonna have our cadmium orange, our yellow ochre, our permanent green light, right? Our raw umber, our burnt umbers over here. So we've got this field covered with those colors. Black and white will be here neutral. Cobalt blue. So that cobalt blue will be used to help balance that. Okay. So let us see what we have. Peggy, good morning, good morning. Glad you made it. By the way, uh, several of you are here that have turned in some work that I haven't been able to get to. So tomorrow morning, Wednesday, we're going to be back to our old ways. And uh, we're going to have kind of, I'm going to get to everybody that's lined up. Um, so if it's an hour or two hour show, and what I'll do is I'll let you know what order you'll be going in at the beginning of the show. So if you don't have time to watch the whole thing, but you want to see yours, you can come back later and you'll be able to find it. Okay, we covered all of our business. Any any unfinished business? All right, that's my vote. Let's leave that unfinished business unfinished and let's get down to this. So one of the first things I have to do is reverse the impact of this. Is I want to make sure that this is brighter. It, let me be clear that this is, has more impact than the background. And when we first start, we might think because this seems like a stronger color, but in fact, it's about the same value. This may be leading, reading a little bit darker. So let's play around and adjust those and see what we can get into. So permanent green light. Feels stiff. Feels stiff. Ah. So now I feel like I can work this paint a little bit. So the very first thing to do is to make sure that your paint quality is appropriate for what you're trying to do. All right, so you can see this is um, has a lot more yellow in it. Now this is grayed down and it's looking very harmonious, so I don't want to jump up to where I am. Right, the idea is not to completely change everything, 
but to just shift things into their place. So I can either start by lightening this or darkening that. Personally, I like to see if I can leave things where there are and make them more by dealing with other things. And that way, if I needed to come back and add even more there, I've got even more power. But first, I'm gonna get this into that ballpark. So how do you guys think I should get there? Well, it's a lot cooler and a lot grayer, right? Well, why don't we just start with the gray part? Again, let me get, get them to the same value or similar. And just fair warning, if I really get into this, um, I'll probably stop talking. All right, so we're still way, way dark, but I feel like the color, the hue, the temperature is a lot better. Again, we're a bit dark there. All right, I feel like we're getting a little bit closer there. Okay, so if that is the pair, then what does our background need to be? Should I mix up a value for the shadow of the pair? Of course I should. Of course I should. Hey, Miss Claudia made it. Good morning, Claudia. Good morning. So for shadow, we want to leave white out. And we like warm. So, well first, before we warm it up, let's darken it down. So I'm gonna use the blue to darken that green value. And it's that, since that's chroma so high, I'm gonna use a little black to darken this up too. And also take some of that chroma out of it. Maybe warm this up a little bit. Should I warm it with red or orange? With red or orange? With red or orange? Mm. Tempted to do red to separate it from the background, but I'm afraid that's going to knock too much chroma out. Yeah, I'm happy with that orange. Okay, so a little orange in there. So what do we have so far? Well, we have the pear and light, um, the pear shadow. Now this is pretty colorful here, so we're gonna we're gonna have to test that out, see if it works. But um, what do we need now? That background, that background needs to be in between those two values, right? In a between. Burnt umber. Um, bit of yellow ochre for the grayness factor. And a bit of 
tad orange for the transparency and the warmth factor. Now I like that, but I feel like it's a little dark and not quite harmonized. So how can I lighten it and harmonize it? Boom. But I kind of want to save that so I could probably just use some of this. Hey, are we in between there? Maybe, do I need to go darker on that pear shadow? I think so, to give me a little elbow room for that background. You guys see how I'm working my three? What is this? This is the number two value, the number three value, the number four value. And that's not looking very number four. You're not being very number four. So, some raw umber. We'll definitely darken this up. I don't think I want it to go too neutral. So how about a little blue with that raw umber? And then I don't want to go too cold too, so I might have to add some more umber before we're done. Let's see what happens. It's feeling a little more harmonized to me. Oops, I don't want any white in that shadow. But I can take just some pure burnt umber. So I'm looking at background, shadow of the pear, light of the pear. Is this too light? Well, I don't know. We'll All right, does that look like four distinct values to you? To me, these two are still pretty dang close. That's pretty close. So do I want to darken this or lighten that? Let me want to lighten this a little bit. Can I do that with uh, yellow ochre? Yeah, getting a little better. Okay, so time to test it out. Now again, I'm not gonna bet the farm on all this. This is just where we're starting. Just where we're starting and then as we get it up on the painting, we'll see what happens. See what happens. There we go, how's that view right there? Is that okay for you guys? Um, I'm sorry this is at an angle. That was the only way I could get the glare off of it. So that is why this is sitting up tilted. And also why if you see me dancing around in the background, I'm tilting and bobbing and weaving my head so that I don't have glare when I'm working on it. Okay, so that was 20... Minutes. Are you guys okay with this pace and what we're doing? I hope so. 
and I know Cindy's not here, so we don't have the uh, the active camera work. I know everything's better with Cindy, but she can't just babysit me all the time. So I'm gonna get nice and comfy, maybe have a little sip of water, and then we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it. All right, so Shakti's following along. Everybody else okay with this? Okay, well, whether you're okay or not, here we go. Here we go. I know, we need some pictures and pictures of the wide shot with this. I'm, we're working on all of it. We're working on everything. Working on everything. So, let's start with this, a small one here, and we're going to test a couple of things out. Let's test a couple of things out. Where is... Okay, and I almost forgot, before I get started, I need to test and see what this paint is like on this board. All right, this was just worked on yesterday. I kept it under a fan all night, um, trying to dry it out. So let's see what happens. Let's see if that was successful. Okay, so it looks like the umber, which is not surprising, umber dries very fast. Looks like most of the umber areas are dry. And I have a feeling the black is probably not going to be. Yep, you see that come off right there? So that's not quite as dry. Okay. Um, My wiping out is um, actually part of my process. Look as I wipe this off, what an interesting kind of, that leaves there. Let's see if I can get you guys a little closer. Not a big change, but now I'm not gonna be scraping black around, right? What about the grapes? Notice how I'm intentionally wiping in different directions. Even when I'm picking up paint. Okay, now I don't have to worry about running into any piles of wet paint. And no, I'm not just doing this because it's a student's work. This is how I would work on my own work, right? See where the surface is. When I first started uh, learning to paint and I would go and watch these demonstrations, it would drive me nearly crazy because they would sit down to paint, and sometimes it was in over an hour before the paintbrush t touched the, the canvas. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. 
But as I get a little better, as I had more experience, more and more I learn that it's all about the setup. It's all about the setup. Have you guys ever had a professional paint crew out to paint your house? All right, if you guys ever hired a professional painting company to paint, come paint your house? What, they're usually there several days? And most of the time, if it's a three-day job, most of the time they don't even start painting until like after lunch on the third day. What are they doing? What are they doing those first two and a half days? They're taping off the windows. Right, they're taping every, they're prepping. And then if everything's prepped, the painting, man, that's the easy part. So you see as I go over, so it's just wet paint. And then I also like to do this because it gives the surface a different feel. Okay, and it's, some of that might last to the end, some of it might not. But again, I'm, the question is always to me, what can I do right now? And that's just like driving on a road. Is it icy? Is it snowy? Is it wet? Is it dry? Are there potholes? Are there cracks in the road? Right, am I driving a big four by four with great big tires? Or am I, do, am I driving a street racer with no suspension? All that stuff matters. All right. So now we're ready to test. Now we're ready to test. Remember, this was what we thought might be the light. Yeah, that's pretty close, huh? It's pretty close to... What they had. So let's get that big enough and flat enough that it carries. <laughs> All right. Let's test this out here. Okay, and then we wanted to know about the background. Let's see, so if we went back like that, do you think that pear is gonna pop? Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. So let's set this, let's set this up. And again, I don't wanna trace all the way around this pear with the same, but I also don't wanna just go here and then leave it. I want some of it at least to pull through to the other side.
And then notice how I'm going to come off of this shape by tying it back to what's underneath. In other words, I don't want hard edges around this side so that that hard edge just says, boom. Right? Steak special, $7.99. Everybody's pulling off the road for it. And just like our movements of our lights, we want these, how can we make those longer? If we're coming this way, do we need a counter force going this way a little bit? And notice how I go over and scrub So I can see the weave of the canvas right here. This top plane, since this is kind of tilted up a little bit, that top plane goes towards air. It's going to turn under towards air. Soft edge here. Now the pair is in the background. But is anybody going to mistake that for pair? No. But it's there. It's there so it harmonizes. So, does that work for the tabletop back there? Maybe. I kind of like what's, what's there. This seems like it might be a little too light. So, can we leave that and come forward? Can we come forward? Let us see. Let us see, let us see, let us see. Where might this be appropriate? It's a pretty strong color, but dark and rich, so why don't I let some of that richness in over here that can sneak out of that. And then since a tabletop's just an indoor landscape, since a tabletop's just an indoor landscape, what do we need with it? Well, we need to pull this across. But as we come across, what's happening? Well, we're getting lighter, grayer overall as we come over. So how can we lighten and gray that? Boop. Lighter and grayer. You guys notice that when I hit these grapes, I'm not going all the way around them, but I'm only trying to hit a small portion of it. Okay. 
Okay, so did you guys notice what I did? I went to find this color and I started mixing it up. And it's a lot darker and richer than that. So rather than try to change that because I felt that was a pretty good color, where is it appropriate to use that? And now from there, what do I do? I just need to step back to that, right? We need to bridge from here to here. And the bridging is where the color runs happen. Okay, are we getting to the pair a little stronger than we were 40 minutes ago? Oh, sick. Okay, so this is still too strong, so let's continue to take that out. And uh, why don't we decide where we want to stop over here? Like, what is our our bright want to be over there when we stop. Maybe something in that range. So I think it's time. I think I think it's time. I think, yep. It's that time in life. That time that we should introduce some purple. Okay, so what do we think? Is our, um, is our pair winning? Is our pair winning? The idea is to have the pair win before we even put the highlight on it. Okay, and then. Sometimes you got to end the charade. Sometimes it's time to come clean.
So did you guys see how I kept that hard edge next to the tapestry? Did you guys... Right, why? Boom, we gotta say stop. Stop, stop in the name of the law. So now I'm thinking where I want them to stop that was too big, so let's just bring it up a little bit. You know, how much do we need? <clears throat> Can we get real here for a second? Can we get real here for a second? Let's see, okay. Woo, I lost. All right. Cindy babysat you this morning. I could not find, oh. Cindy's the best. Cindy is the best. Say again why you wiped that out. Um, what was I wiping out? The whole thing? Um, again, I, I wipe out for effect. It, it starts to build layer, but when I start, I want to wipe out to get any loose paint. So did you guys see how I kind of lightly went over that was some of my if you've got really wet paint and I do that that wet paint's going to be dragged through there right so one of the reasons I come in and take away the wet paint is so that I have the freedom to go crazy without dragging something somewhere um, unintentionally unintentionally um Boom, boom. Thank you, Shakti, for sharing your painting. Janie says, yes, thank you, thank you, Shakti. Ah, oh, look at that. Thank you for being a safe place to share. And uh, that right there, guys, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very serious about. In all my classes and everything, I love for you guys to give your input and share, but um, it should never be destructive, right? And the criticism should only come when requested, and it should be constructive criticism. So Peggy's got to go. All right, thanks, Peggy. Love the camaraderie in this group, absolutely. Yeah, love the purple. Good, I was hoping some of you could pick up on that. If it looked a little hot, a little too much, what do we do? We cool it down. And that doesn't mean you take blue, but do you see how I just rubbed a little purple through? And so it still has some vibration without being yellow, 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 or warm, 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 warm. All right. Did I miss something? I did. What size? Yeah, 11 by 14 is the size of this. Susan had asked what size. Okay, so Shakti says the pear looks too cool to me. And maybe that was before I put the purple down. But that purple is what's going to help work but if it was still too cool if that pair is still too cool well how can we warm it up how can we stay green but warm this up Does that feel better? So I don't know how much that showed up, but basically what I did, I did with the yellow, the same at front, the same thing I did with the purple back here. I don't have to replace the whole color, but by just introducing some more of the yellow, it doesn't feel as cool. And sometimes, since we don't look there, we're unaware of it. But you can take care of that warmness and coolness in the shadow. So what would happen if we really warm the shadow up? Will that help this thing harmonize? Did that solve it? 
Did that solve it? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Well, why are we trying to fix what that looks like, guys? Woo! So Zen Master was here, and if he had his Zen stick, I would have got walloped. Whee! Ah! Ah! Quit hitting me. I want to go to a different school. Because our eyes aren't reading this yet because our white's not on the canvas. Radio silence. We have any uh, singers in the group? Maybe we could get some backup vocals here. Maybe all this would sound better with that backup vocals. So there's the idea of a halo keeping a hard edge. How could we make that pair bright? We can make that brighter by just making this edge harder back here. Yes, yes, we can. And why don't we make this a little bit lighter back here too? Then there'll be more contrast between that shadow. And let's not, let's not put so much green in it. So again, that the color is different. So I'm, we're trying to get as much of a wallop out of this as we can. But it needs to be gray. It needs to be gray. Okay.
How are we doing? Are we making some progress on our grape here? How are we doing? All right, so Shakti's better with the green, the purple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, warm in the shadow. <laughs> yeah, it can happen fast, but the setup, the setup. So can we be real sensitive here for a minute? Can you guys see what a thief this guy is? Can you see what a thief this guy is? Let's see if we can quiet that down to make this guy stronger. Do you guys see that? And now that you can you see that we did that, we've got an aura of true brightness out here. And so I work real hard to set it up and then I'm just gonna gradually go out and out. But again, we don't wanna start at one end and go all the way to the other. So how are we gonna handle this? Well, if you guys will remember, I talked at the, at the um, beginning about quieting this up. So let's do that to see what we have. Because I know I'm coming up here in an hour, but um, I'm gonna go for a little while. You, nobody's forcing you guys to stay. If you gotta go, go. But uh, it takes a little while to do this, and I'm doing it, and it's working, so we're gonna keep going for a little while. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to quiet this down okay we want to start we want to start dark black is about as dark as you can go and this is background so I'm gonna make sure that's really thin right plenty of medium in there so that I can glaze it move it right not leave a bunch of chunks i'm also going to mix it up real well so that the oil and pigment are evenly distributed throughout and then before i start there i'm going to go to my next step and of course we don't want dead black because it'll suck all the life out of our painting so i'm going to add just a bit of cad red in there to keep it on the warm side that mixed up then from there we should be able to go to burnt umber okay the burnt umber we're gonna pull it out with orange instead of red because orange is the direction we're going in Add orange. And where do we go from here, ladies and gentlemen? That's right, yellow ochre. So look at the run we have before we've touched our white. Okay, so one thing that can help with this is a 
Uh, this is a big soft brush. I think this is a watercolor brush. What does this say? It's a Simply Simmons XL flat. Flat. It is flat. I guess that's flat in different languages. That's a 30. Um, this is also a land nickel. Very, very soft. So anything really soft, you don't necessarily want to paint with that, but if we need to take some of this out, that's going to be very useful. Very useful. So let's see what happens. Yeah, we were talking at the beginning of the program that it's almost helpful not to see it right side up, right? To actually see what I'm looking for because I'm looking at abstractnesses, right? What's winning and what's losing. And if my mind is thinking objects or that grape or I want another grape or this pear or that stem, it, you're not going to see these larger movements. All right, so we got some soft brushes prepared. Let's grab a large. Why do I want to do this with that rather than the one I've been working on? Well, this is going to give me different marks than that. Just by the sheer size of it. Right? And it's, it's kind of easy to overlook um, the importance of a variety of marks, right? And um, a variety of tools can help you with that. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. I guess I need that button here. How's everybody doing? We okay? Are we okay? I got the microphone in the way. There, now you can kind of see the painting. So we're going to quiet all this down. So man, we can just hear that party coming down the street. So some medium so that my brush just isn't soaking all that stuff up. Okay, I've got white on here now. I never want to go back to there. Right? All I can do with this brush at this point is work along the periphery because I never want to go back to the source because I'm going to introduce white to the source. Oof. Oof. And then you talk about disaster. Oof. Remember that paint I put down earlier? That's why we use oil paint. It's still wet, and I can just let this stuff 
fade right into one another. All right, how are we doing? Right, a little bit much, a little too much force. Huh, do we need a Hallmark card to make things better? Huh? Maybe some homemade cookies or something? Some fresh flowers? I'm sorry, I didn't mean what I said. Dang right you didn't. You're still sleeping outside. You're still sleeping outside. And I'm keeping the flowers and candies. Now go on, get. Okay, so now we got the soft brush. Again, I, I just want to get it wet so it's not picking the paint up. I don't want it soaking wet, so with the paper towel. And what I, I have to move from here out because as I come out, I could be getting white. And once white's on there, I'm not going back to the beginning. Woo, man, that's some commitment. Am I ready for this? Am I ready for that kind of commitment in my life? Man, let's whew, take a deep breath, shake it off. Yeah, it's it, we're in control of the paint. We're dance partners with paint. For some reason, we think we can only put paint on like this. Man, paint's got so much more personality than that. Let that stuff shine. And you know, in some personalities, they act different when they're around different people, when they're around soft brushes versus hard brushes. Now, I need to finish going up and down so that I don't have any um, texture going across, because when it's on the wall, if the texture's going across, it's gonna catch highlights. So, you're gonna see me. I'm not gonna, there's two ways you can hold your brush. If this is the canvas, you can hold it straight up. And This is gonna move paint around. If I wanna smooth paint down, I'm gonna lay this brush like you guys see the difference? So just from this 90 degree angle down to whatever, 10 or 15 degrees, maybe five if we're lucky, the paint acts much, much, much differently, responds much, much differently than that. So we're gonna lay our brush down, lay it down, and kiss the baby. Kiss the baby, kiss the baby, kiss the baby, kiss the, gentle, 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 gentle with that baby. Be gentle with that baby. Now notice I did come back over here, but I didn't up there, right? So if this is a little bit lighter here in the middle, I'm okay with that. Okay, let's see, 905, we're doing pretty good. So I'm probably gonna work a little bit on the transition here, then we'll call it a day, but I wanna show you, that's not enough, right? We need at least one more in here. We need at least one more. So 
So, So what's the difference between what I'm doing and most of you guys are doing? Most of you guys are insisting that whatever you put there is a single color spot. But I kind of like to have nine or ten colors shining through there. Do you see the difference? How every time I'm coming over, I'm not completely covering and I'm not completely blending. Right? When you first start doing this, it's nothing other than a practice of self-control. Right? And then when you get tired of focusing so hard to have that much self-control for that much time a day, you realize that if you'll just consistently think in a certain manner and work in a certain manner, then everything will take care of itself and you don't have to be such a micromanager control freak. Getting better? Are we getting better? All right, guys, and on and on and on it would go. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. What's happening here? What is happening? <laughs> I love Bridget, too. How did I forget about Bridget this morning? Bridget made an appearance. That's right. That's exactly right. I was, All I was doing was going from this quiet, quiet dark to this very active light. We got to call in Bridget. We got to call in Bridget right the mediator to mediate this whole thing for sure for sure for sure yeah let's see susan says i have the same simply simmons brush but when i've used it to blend it always used it dry but i dipped it in medium exactly it because Dipping it in the medium is changing the road from dry gravel to smooth concrete to wet concrete to icy concrete. Right? So think about that and the different kinds of marks and the different ways paint will move in those different circumstances. And you just, what you're able to do with paint just skyrockets. Along with the idea is, the paintbrush, not only can we put things on, and, but we can scrape things off and scrape it on this way. That makes different kind. Yeah, we just want this stuff to look good. To look good. Good, good, good. Yes, dipped it in first. Try that. Susan, I'm going to quit telling you. You're getting too good. All right, I think I'm going to have to go on a hiatus from giving Susan any advice. You're starting to scare me, Susan. You're starting to scare me. You're getting so good. Yes. Bridget's becoming our best friend. BFF. Oh my God. Okay, who's gonna draw? Who's gonna draw us a uh, portrait of Bridget? I think we may need Bridget. Is our that our mascot? Have we discovered our mascot? Do I got another project to work on? Oh my God, Jason, quit working on so many projects. But they're so fun. So much fun. All right. Any questions, anybody? I think we're gonna leave it here. Let me see if I can zoom you in. See how close I can zoom you in. So you can see what's happening. Let's go as tight as we can and maybe go around this thing. Start right here. How's that focus? Can we get a better focus than that? There's a little better. 
There's a little better. <laughs> so Shakti says, oops, I'm not big enough to show you. I'll, we'll, we'll come back in a minute. I'm zoomed in here. Um, yeah, there's not... Look at these. I didn't touch these grapes. Right? And so that's just another level, but look how much you can do before you get into the detail. And notice... Yeah, I know you guys aren't... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Point. Point, point, point. There's still a lot of chunkiness back here. Do you see that? You see over in here? Seemingly hard edges. But the question is, is does it distract? You can do as much as you want as long as it doesn't distract from the show. Okay, that's our guide. That's our guide. All right, guys. I think we just need to see and see and see. We'll be in person one day and we'll get you up, stick your nose in it and see this stuff. But in the meantime, this was good. Um, <clears throat> Ellie, I'm sorry I didn't get to yours, but I wanted to kind of slow down and show you the process today. That's We spent an hour and 15 on this. Um, I really didn't mess around too much. That was just about all out for an hour 15. Um, and again, I, it's just getting fun now. It's just getting fun. So um, I don't know what to say, guys, other than um, you need to try to arrange to quit that day job so you got more hours for painting, right? I got to I gotta teach you guys to paint so I don't have to teach so I can paint. I got to paint more hours. It takes a long time. All right, Susan. I'm not being kind. You're a good painter. I wish I was nice. You're a good painter, Susan. Just, and she's just working at it. She's worked at it. She's listened. She's tried. It, no matter how good this sounds, until you integrate it in with your stuff, you know, with your life, until you practice it so it comes out of your hand, this isn't my property. I, there's nothing here that I own. There's nothing I'm sharing that I own. Um, I'm sharing it with you. I hope you're able to pick it up, eat it, digest it, let it become part of you. Right? No need to memorize it and all that. Chew on it. Chew on it. Chew that up. Spit it out. Digest it. Boom. What? Oh. No. Claudia. Claudia. Why are you making me sad? Bridget needs to remain imaginary. Are you afraid of the images in my head, Claudia? Are you afraid of the images in my head? Is that what's going on there? All right, just kidding. This was great. Love watching. Thanks, baby. Thanks, Claudia. Appreciate it. Oh, all right. Let's do some of this. So, let's hear for. Let's hear it. This is for paintings that work. Oh! Yay! 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 All right. So, um, Shakti said she's going to leave this. This was only a color study, and again, you're welcome to save this. It, it, but it's the ideas I want you at the idea. So I do hope you're inspired to work and uh, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? We're today for Tuesday. Hope you can join us for uh, Sketch Club tonight, 7 o'clock on Facebook. In the meantime, I'm going to be recording videos for our online school. And uh, Cindy will make sure to put that in the description or the uh, things if anybody's interested. And until next time, see you guys later. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.